Another night of protests in Asheville. However, a quieter scene in the past couple of hours than we saw last night. This is video from earlier this evening when protesters marched through the streets in downtown Asheville. The city's new curfew has been in place now for about three hours. That order came from the mayor along with National Guard troops. All are efforts to cut down on the destructive protests seen last night. Tonight we have team coverage on the latest confrontations with police. News 13's Taylor Young joined us in a few moments with what she learned from some of the city's protesters. But we start with Caitlin Pinter and Caitlin, you've covered these protests from the start. Describe the scene tonight. Yes, I have and really within the last hour, let's see. They've actually been moving the Asheville fire trucks back into the Asheville fire station. Firefighters told us yesterday that, that they have been moving these fire trucks just in case they do get trapped in during these protests. We've also seen law enforcement also back off. Many of the law enforcement from other agencies have now left. But I do want to tell you about one tweet that we just read from Asheville Police. I'm going to read it off my phone here. Asheville Police say they have arrested two armed males at Market and Court Plaza. They say both were armed with handguns. One was open carrying and one was carrying a concealed weapon without a concealed carry permit. And both are currently being booked in the detention center. And an additional protester was arrested in the possession of a knife. They say there were also a number of additional arrests made tonight. We actually witnessed uh, multiple arrests as well as we've been out here for the last, well, since three hours ago, really when the curfew started here. But I also want to show you some footage of the march that we followed around 830. So from 830 to around 930, there were a group of around 100 protesters that basically marched around the perimeter of the downtown area, holding up their signs, holding up their fists, really doing the similar chants that we've been hearing for the last three days about George Floyd saying his name, hands up, don't shoot. And then again, that all ended here around 9.30 when police began dispersing these people and deploying some kind of tear gas. Now, as you know, we are three hours into this curfew here, and I do want to tell you the specifics of that because this curfew is going to last until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. There are some exceptions to the curfew. Medical personnel, military personnel, media, healthcare professionals, and you can leave your house for necessary goods and services. But if you're out downtown right now and you don't have one of those exceptions or a purpose of being down here, you still can be arrested as a part of this curfew. Anytime you continue to protest into the night, the chances of it becoming violent multiply. Now, this was really the epicenter of the protests over the last couple of nights. And while it was relatively quiet tonight, last night and the night before, there was a lot more action. There was uh, property damage, tear gas was used. And that's when organizers say the message they're trying so hard to get across to people is lost. It's just important for all of us to stand together and fight a, a cause, a silent war, really. Protesters like La Shakita are filling Pack Square Park in downtown Asheville for the third straight night. I came out here because I saw what was going on yesterday and I felt like I had to come out and say something. Chants and signs sharing a message, Black Lives Matter and injustice won't go unnoticed. What happened with the George Floyd uh, video, it just heightens people awareness of something that had been dormant that they thought was dormant and had to been eradicated, but it's not. It's still prevalent. Pastor Hardaway says so far their message is being heard. He says Asheville's mayor and police chief have made concrete statements on how to move forward. You've got to keep that momentum going. Uh, we've got to ensure that what was spoken are, are those things are implemented. So I think the mayor and the chief have set a good ground ground work and foundation for moving forward. One thing Pastor Hardaway says could tarnish the work of protesters is destruction and violence. Anytime that you you take on that sense of violence against violence, you have become part of the perpetrators and you can't do that. We want to lift people up. Lasha Kedar says despite a call from organizers to obey the city's curfew, protests are going to continue past eight o'clock. I don't feel like anybody is going to leave until they feel heard. I'm shaking right now. This is the Masonic Temple, like right behind our house. As she recorded the fire early Tuesday, neighbor Rachel Kunz knew exactly what the building was, but she had no idea what it represented to so many in Shiloh. I mean, you can see the flames almost over the trees there. Where we now see black and rubble on Booker Street 
Ronald Scott pictures years of events that brought folks together, from cookouts to scholarship fundraisers. Venus Lodge Number 62 was Asheville's first black Masonic Lodge group. Ronald hoped to renovate the structure, which had been unused for some seven years since another fire caused extensive damage. It was constructed back in the early 70s by people like former lodge master Marvin Chambers. It was built uh, by sweat and tears and uh, a lot of sacrifices. Back then, they paid 50 cents for each block used in the structure built for the long haul, or so they hoped. If the brethren who had worked hard, as well as the sisters who had worked hard to, to see the construction of this building, they would turn over in their graves to see what has happened to it since that, that time. He and Ronald hold out hope that one day they'll find the funding to rebuild the historic hub as it was in the 70s. I saw the blood and sweat that the brothers put in to build this and how they came together. Oh my God, this is so scary. Flames ripped through a place near and dear to the community. Now Rachel knows the rest of the story tied to so many memories.